some families of organic compounds. We have seen the alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. Now we will have a look at some more families in organic chemistry. The two categories depend on shape. If they are tetrahedral or planar, chloroalkanes and alcohols are tetrahedral, whereas there are four planar families. You do need to know all of these. In your exams, you are asked about their properties, how to name them, and their uses. Chloralkanes are alkanes where a hydrogen has been replaced with a chlorine. They are mainly used as solvents for removing oils. Trichloromethane, commonly known as chloroform, is used as an anaesthetic. Chloralkane properties. They are non-polar, therefore they do not dissolve in water easily. This is why they are good solvents for oils. Like substances dissolve like substances. The longer the chain, the increased van der Waals forces, and therefore increased boiling points. Chloralkanes follow the exact same naming system as before with the hydrocarbons. However, the chlorine atom present must now be the lowest number possible for the alkane. There are a wide range of alcohols, and only one of them is suitable for human consumption, ethanol. Most alcohols are solvents. Alcohols all end in all and must have an OH functional group attached to the carbon atom somewhere in the compound. This OH group, the functional group, is what gives alcohols its properties. The naming of alcohols follows a similar pattern as before. However, you will be told where the alcohol functional group is placed, so you do not need to worry about the lowest number. Propantuol tells us the alcohol group is attached to the second carbon. The molecular formula is underneath. It is important that you can read these and also that you can draw the structural formulas as well. The number inserted before the al can also be placed on the outside of the compound. For instance, 2-propanol is the same as propantuol. I prefer to use propantuol naming system and therefore I will use this for the rest of the remainder of the questions. If there is no number present, then the OH group is attached to the carbon at the end. For example, butanol features the OH group on the first or the last carbon. Ethanol is the same. Alcohols have three subcategories, primary, secondary and tertiary, and you need to be able to tell these apart. They differ due to the position of the functional OH group. Primary alcohols are where the carbon atom attached to the OH group is attached to only one other carbon atom. For instance, in ethanol, the carbon atom attached to the OH group has three other bonds. Only one of those bonds is a carbon atom, so therefore it is a primary alcohol. Secondary alcohols are where the carbon atom attached to the OH group is attached to two other carbon atoms. For instance, in propantuol, the carbon attached to the OH group has three other bonds. Two of these bonds are carbon atoms, so therefore it is a secondary alcohol. Tertiary alcohols are where the carbon atom attached to the OH group is attached to three other carbon atoms. For instance, 2 methyl propantuol, the carbon atom is attached to the OH group has three other bonds. Three of those bonds are carbon atoms, so therefore it is a tertiary alcohol. Alcohols have high boiling points due to hydrogen bonding between molecules. Hydrogen bonding is why alcohols are liquids and not gases. Boiling points increase with molecular weight. The first three alcohols are completely miscible in water, that is, they dissolve in water. 
In addition to this, they also dissolve in non-polar substances too. This suggests that the first three alcohols are both polar and non-polar. The OH functional group is polar, which is why they dissolve in water, whereas the carbon chain is non-polar, allowing it to be as used as a solvent for oils. However, as the chain length gets bigger, with additional CH2 atoms, the alcohol becomes more and more non-polar. This is why butanol and higher chained alcohols are not soluble in water, but are in fact soluble in oil. Aldehydes have a CHO functional group at the end of the compound. The endings of all aldehydes end in Al. The carbon double bond to oxygen is known as a carbonyl group. Methanol is used to preserve biological specimens. Note, the ore attached to the CHO group can indicate either a hydrogen or a carbon chain. Aldehydes are easy to name. This is because the functional group CHO must be at the end of the compound. For example, ethanol. You can draw the CH group at an angle or have it at 90 degrees. I put it at an angle because this is actually what they should look like. However, you would not lose any marks if you drew it at 90 degrees either. Aldehydes cannot form hydrogen bonds with one another. They have dipole-dipole bonding, which means their bonds are stronger than alkanes, but weaker than alcohols. Aldehydes can form hydrogen bonds with water. Similar to alcohol, and for the same reasons, the lower member aldehydes are both polar and non-polar. Solubility decreases in water with increasing chain length, and this is due to the carbons being non-polar. Benzaldehyde is an example of an aromatic aldehyde, as it contains benzene. Benzaldehyde smells of almonds, and it is used as a flavouring agent in cooking. Ketones are structurally similar to aldehydes, except the carbon double bond to oxygen will not be at the end. All ketones end in own. For your leum certificate, you only need to know two specific ketones, propanone and butanone. Propanone is used to remove nail varnish. With propanone, the carbonyl group must be in the middle carbon. That is why there is no number attached, for example, propan-2-one. There is no number attached to butanone either. This is because the carbonyl group must be the lowest number, and therefore, if you think about it, the second carbon is the only place the carbonyl group could be. Ketones form dipole-dipole bonds with one another. Their boiling points are higher than alkanes, but lower than alcohols. They are essentially identical to aldehydes in this respect. The solubility properties are the same as aldehydes. They can form hydrogen bonds with water. The first three ketones are soluble in water, but they become less and less soluble with each carbon added. Carboxylic acids can be identified by the COOH functional group at the end of the compound. All carboxylic acids have an oic acid at the end of its name. Vinegar, is also known as ethnoic acid, is a well-known carboxylic acid. Methanoic acid is ejected from ants as a form of protection when they bite. Farmers often spray propanoic acids over harvested crops in their sheds to preserve the crop. All carboxylic acids are considered to be weak acids. The functional group COOH is always at the end of the compound. 
You do need to know the naming and drawing procedure for the compound. However, it is almost identical to the naming of aldehydes. The functional group is the only thing that's different. Hydrogen bonding can occur between carboxylic acids. However, they are somewhat unique. Carboxylic acids can form two hydrogen bonds with one another. We call these dimers. This extra hydrogen bond increases the strength and therefore carboxylic acids have a very high boiling point, higher than alcohol. Carboxylic acids are very polar because of the OH functional group. They are more soluble in water than alcohols. Solubility in water decreases with increasing carbon chain length. Solubility in solvents increases with this chain length. Why do carboxylic acids act as acids? Well, there are two reasons. The inductive effect and the stability of the carboxylase ion. You just need to know the reasons, not how they work. Esters are similar to carboxylic acids, except their functional group, C double bond O with another oxygen, is within the compound. Esters are used as perfumes and as yacht sails. Esters are a little bit trickier to name. You are given a structure and asked to name the ester. Step 1. Put a dotted line through the carbon atom that is singularly bonded to the oxygen. This will separate both sides to help with the naming. Step 2. Count the number of carbons on the side with no oxygens. This will be the alkyl group. In this case, it is methyl because there is one carbon bonded to three hydrogens. We write down methyl. Step 3. Count the number of carbons on the side with oxygens. There is one carbon present. We will call this side methanoate. The ending for esters, remember, is O8. Step 4. Combine the names and the ester is called methyl methanoate. The naming of esters does take practice. We will look at two other examples following the same procedure. Step 1. Put a dotted line through the carbon bonded singularly to the oxygen. This will separate both sides. Step 2. Count the number of carbons on the side with no oxygens. This is the alkyl group side. In this case, it is ethyl. Step 3. Count the number of carbons on the side with oxygens. There are two carbons present, so we call this side ethnoate. Step 4. Combine the names and the ester is called ethyl ethnoate. Step 1. Put a dotted line through the carbon atom singly bonded to oxygen. This separates both sides. Step 2. Count the number of carbons on the side with no oxygens. This would be the alkyl group. In this case, it is methyl. Step 3. Count the number of carbons on the side with oxygens. This side we have three carbons, so we call it propanoate. Step 4. Combine the names, and the ester is called methyl propanoate. Esters cannot form hydrogen bonds with one another. They have dipole-dipole bonding, therefore they have low boiling points. Esters can form hydrogen bonds with water. The first three are soluble in water, but as they increase with carbon chain length, they become less and less polar.